Hi everyone, Jim from Javelin here with a SolidWorks tech tip. I have here a grate and what I want to do, or at least a plate with a hole in it, and what I want to do is I want to pattern this hole. However, I don't want to use a linear pattern because the positioning of the other cutouts is, has no real rhyme or reason behind it. It's going to be a couple of things that I'm modifying here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename my dimensions. So I modify this dimension, this is the, uh, this is the height of the cutout. So I'll call it height. I'll call this one width. I'll call this one my Z position. Doesn't like my minus sign in there. So maybe I'll just call it Z POS for position. And this is my X position. I'm also going to have it so that this fillet here I can adjust the radius on. So I'll call this fillet 1. I realize it's named after the feature, but when it shows up in my table, it'll be called, it'll be named after the dimension. So let's go into this table that I mentioned. So to do this, contrary to the table-driven pattern, table-driven pattern would really only allow me to select the, uh, the XY positions, I'm going to use variable pattern. And what variable pattern allows me to do, I'm going to select some features to pattern. And then I'm going to say create pattern table. I'm going to add some other columns for my dimensions. I just have to single click and it adds the column for them. You'll notice the names of my dimensions are displayed along here, which is why I renamed them. Otherwise it would just say D1, D2, D3, and so on and so forth. Might be a bit, uh, might be a bit tricky to figure out what's going on there with respect to that. I want to add some instances. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say add some instances. I'm just going to do them one at a time. Actually, you know what? Let's do them a few at a time. So for my first, basically along this bottom row, I'm going to have four that are e equally spaced. So 1.75 and 0.25 is two. Plus I also want another, basically I want it to be uh, the Z, the Z or sorry the X position is going to be whatever the number was above plus two. So let's try Excel functionality. Doesn't like that, but that's fine. I can do it manually once. Uh, two point five. No. Two point two five. And I can I can select both of these cells, and I can use this little uh, this little corner dragging icon in order to drag this down, just like it was Excel. You'll notice that the pattern continues, and I'm able to get additional instances. I'm going to click this Update Preview button down here at the bottom, and then if I move this out of the way, you can see I end up with a linear pattern. Each one of these I can modify independently, any of the dimensions. I'm going to add another instance. And in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm just going to modify a couple of different things. So for here, I want this one to be 1.5. That's going to be the Z position. That's going to be in this direction. Um, the, the X position, I'm going to put somewhere in the middle. So let's make it, let's make it line up with that 4.25 instance. I'm also going to change its height and width. <clears throat> this is going to be, uh, let's say, I don't know, let's say make it four inches tall. And I'm going to set its width so that its width is, um, let's make it, let's make it four as well. I'm just sort of guessing on that. Let's say update preview. Okay, it looks like it's a little bit further than I'd initially wanted it to be. Uh, let's try 3.75. Update preview. There we go. So now you can see it lines up nicely with that edge. 
I want to increase the radius on there. So I'm going to change the fillet size from 0 0.06 to, I don't know, let's make it, let's make it a half inch. Update the preview. There we go. I can add another random instance. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's leave this for now. I'll say okay. And we'll say okay. And you can see it creates the pattern. I'm going to add another instance up here. So to do this, I'm going to edit the pattern. Right click, edit feature, just like I was editing any other feature. And I'm going to say edit pattern table. I can easily go in here and add another instance. Let's set this so the height is, we'll keep it four, just like before. And we'll also make this 3.75. Um, my Z position is also going to be 1.5, but I'm going to keep it so the X position starts at here. And let's make this a quarter inch. Update the preview. Let's say okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Let's 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 investigate this instances to skip column. So what I can do is I can turn this instance to skip on. We'll say okay. And then what should happen when I exit out is you should see that the instance that I've specified to skip is now being skipped. It gets better than this though because I didn't just add that other instance just to get rid of it. I want it. I want some of. I want two configurations of this plate. One of them has the large cutout on the right. The other one has the large cutout on the left. If I expand this out, you'll notice each instance has a list in the tree, and I can suppress or unsuppress them. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create another configuration. And I'm going to unsuppress this one and suppress this one. Now you can see I can switch back and forth between my two configurations. And it keeps my feature tree nice and short because all of this is controlled with a single variable pattern. 